Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Cinema Wave podcast. We are covering House of the Dragon, episode seven today. I will be one of your hosts. I am Liz Seiko, and I am joined by Mark on this episode. Ooh, Liz, this is our first episode together in the history of Cinema Wave podcast. I'm so excited. I'm hyped, too. And then we also have Vinny with us. Hello, hello. Um, okay, let's let's just get into it. Mark and I kind of caught up on each other's thoughts because we haven't really talked that much about overall House of the Dragon, but it seems like we're all on the same page a little bit, hoping that it gets a little bit more active um, and just wanting them to have a powerful ending. I'm interested to hear both your thoughts on this episode. Um, so let's go right into it. Opening scene is the two dragons. What did we think? Opening shot, opening scene. Yeah. Mark, go for it. Yeah, we have the 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 standoff uh, between the two dragons. Uh, I think my initial thoughts is the way that Sea Smoke selected Adam felt very convenient. You know, Sea Smoke just leaves Dragonstone and then finds Adam, and then in the next scene he's facing off against Rhaenyra. I felt it all just came together, much like Game of Thrones season eight, where things just kind of happen because the plot needs them to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, But I do think it's interesting that, you know, Adam has been looking for a reason or like a purpose in life. And he's wanted this kind of stepping stone to get into the limelight. And here's this opportunity. I'm very curious to see where his character goes, because right now he feels very much like a pushover. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, I'll do anything you want. You know, the dragon chose me. You know, I'll do whatever. And I'm very interested to see where his ambitions go, especially because he is Corliss's bastard. And we want to see, you know. Does Corliss use this to his advantage or does Adam kind of want to, you know, make his own life without his his bastard father's, uh, you know, kind of lineage? So interesting first scene for me, at least. Hmm. Hmm. Benny? Yeah, so I agree. I think that recently this season has had a lot of conveniences, like you've mentioned, where it's felt like later half Game of Thrones and that kind of, it, it digs into me. However, however, I will say the... The, just the general opening in this self containing this episode in of what it is itself the opening is great i love that shot that extra what that extreme wide shot of the two dragons like face by face on the you know Rhaenyra on the left side and adam on the right side it is an incredible shot and it is so um it's so dramatic and it's so like I'm trying to almost like Renaissance esque, like a like a mm. painting that you would see from from that era. It's it's beautiful, and honestly, the, I, I'll go into the cinematography later in this episode because I think overall the cinematography here throughout this episode was my favorite part. There's some really cool stuff they do with the camera later on in the episode, mm. and I think that the with that and also the interaction between Rhaenyra and Adam starts off the episode very strong uh but like I I agree with you Mark Adam is interesting right now he's very conveniently has a dragon now and then on top of that very conveniently is you know kneeling to Rhaenyra and and just on board immediately yeah I know uh, Liz and I talked about last episode of him being a wild card. That it, it, if his motives change later in the season, or well, we only have one episode. <laughs> if his motives change in season three, it'd be very interesting to see his approach as as a wild card as character. So. Definitely. No, I agree. I think. Um... One thing that the opening se- ep- sequence lacked for me was I just really want Rhaenyra to like own her power a little bit more. Mm. I felt like she seemed very not weak, but just not sure of what was happening when she was speaking with Adam, which I get because she is trying to like figure it out. But I don't know. I wanted her to be a little bit more assertive with telling him what to do rather than like asking him what he's going to do. Yeah, that's true. Because it's like Mm. you are his queen at the end of the day like don't see don't ask him like oh whose side are you going to be on like will you rule like be on my side like tell him like i will teach you how to do this but you're going to be on my side Mm -hmm. um and i was a little disappointed to see how quickly adam just like fell into it of like yep i will do whatever you need me to do i feel like if if any person just became 
a king and queen in regular people's eyes. Like there's a little bit of a chip on his shoulder that should be mm-hmm. there. Yeah. So I was a little shocked by how they did that. Mm-hmm. But when I first saw the shot, I was ready. I was like, okay, mm-hmm. this is giving Game of Thrones yeah. dramatic, gorgeous shots feeling the um weight of the scene coming and so i bought it but wish a little bit of different things happened um i do think it was a really nice foreshadowing scene of the different events that were then going to unfold throughout the rest of the episode um especially with the other dragons Hmm. um so i guess we'll start talking about just the big the big point in (laughs) this is that now there are more dragon riders on team black side than there ever has been in the whole show so far. Um, what do we think, Vinny? I'm going to give it back mm. to you. Did we like how it unfolded? Did Were we shocked? Did we like <laughs> that she let them all just like try? What were your thoughts? Yeah. So it confirmed the theory that we were talking about way back. At, um, I think it was like episode three when, you know, Ulf first says he's a bastard. And then mm-hmm. we talked about on one of our episodes how you know, the blacksmith is getting so much attention. He has white hair. Yeah. And I was like, this is, he is obviously a Targaryen. Mm-hmm. So to have that confirmed is uh, it, uh, inside. I'm like, yay, my <laughs> theory is right. Um, I do think it, it's interesting. It's interesting. I actually, I don't, I, I enjoy it, actually. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take the stance that I, I like this because it is pivoting the narrative in a direction where it's once again unpredictable. And I like that. I like the idea that Ulf is kind of this, you know, he's he's a, he's a bum. Yeah, he's and, a loser. Yeah. <laughs> so, With a name like Ulf, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and having that character now riding a dragon... Speaking of wild cards, that could be a huge wild card. I mean, off the bat, he makes a really foolish decision of just like going straight to King's Landing yeah. and making a point of like, I got a dragon now. So, which wait, do you hmm. think that was him making that decision, or do you think it was Rhaenyra being like telling him, as one of my weaker people and the smaller dragon, I want you to fly so that they know mm. this oh i th- I thought it was completely like he had no control over oh, silver okay. wing like he might have like he imprinted on it he got on it and then silver wing just took off and he's like holy shit i have no <laughs> idea what this do dragon's this. doing yeah that's what i took it as because it looks like he had no control of mm-hmm. the dragon when he's over king's landing so mm. that's how i took it okay yeah. okay yeah so that that makes more sense mm-hmm. that makes more sense um but yeah i i think even even uh do we know the blacksmith's name? Hugh. Hugh. Yeah. Even Hugh's character, I, I like him. I'm actually really, I'm intrigued. Mm-hmm. I like how this now, like I said, sets the narrative in a unpredictable direct direction. And then on top of that, if we're talking about cinematography, this whole scene, mm. if y'all have ever seen Cloverfield. Yeah, I was going to mm-hmm. say. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is Cloverfield right now, but in House of the Dragon, mm-hmm. which I thought was awesome. They made it look like all one take. And I watched the behind the scenes of how they did that. Just so cleverly done. Beautiful cinematography. And you really feel the scale of that scene and how dangerous Vermithor is. And I just, I I, I thought that, that later half of the episode and, and the climax of this episode was just epic. Mm-hmm. And I'm excited to see where, where it takes us. Yeah, it definitely felt like boots on the ground type of like camera work, which mm-hmm. was cool and very much like hard home and like battle mm. the bastards like you're in it so that was really cool i however did not really love this this sequence i don't love the story beat that we're just gonna stick as many targaryen bastards into a room and like the dragons will imprint on one of them right and then mm. we end up getting two it works out really well i didn't love that i also i don't know how i feel about the bastards like hugh and Ulf because I feel like we had so much time with them that it was so obvious that the dragons were going to imprint on them. Like there was no tension. Like Hugh was just going to burn there because it would be like, why did we spend all this time with him if he wasn't going to get a dragon? And same thing with Ulf. So that part of it didn't feel like, oh, wow, it actually like I wasn't expecting that. Like I very much was expecting these two to make it out. Um, So I didn't love that. We obviously find out that at least Hugh, I don't know Ulf's um, lineage if they talk about that, but we know Hugh is very much like premium cut Targaryen, like Viser- uh, Viserys and Damon's sister or brother had a, ba- he's their bastard. 
Hmm. I think I forget. they're uh, Damon's father's sister. Damon's father's sisters. He's yes. He's, okay. Yeah. So they're like uh, cousins. Right. Him and okay. Damon. Got it. Yeah. So definitely like premium stock Targaryen. Like that. That makes sense. Um, I guess I just didn't like how you know it just it happened. Uh, I also don't like that uh, the the concept of dragon writing has now felt a little watered down because you know now adam's done it in this episode without any training ulf even though he might not have been controlled he was able to do it all the way to king's landing like i feel like some of that magic was taken away whereas like game of thrones it was like a big deal to like get on that dragon the first time or like john imprinting with the dragon with danny and then like not feeling comfortable with it so i felt like some of the magic of the world kind of went away because of the the haste at which they did these two weeks of like just new dragon riders. Mm -hmm. Now they're here. Now they're ready. Um, so yeah, for, for me, like I agree the, the way that they presented it camera work wise was really cool. I just think overall it, it didn't come together as triumphantly as I think they wanted it to. I kind of lean toward Mark a little bit Ooh. more on this. <laughs> <Make it my laughs> um, I think the re I do appreciate it, but I think it's because overall the whole season's just lacked action. That that's why for me it feels like, ooh, finally, like we're getting some like people dying, essentially. Mm. Like finally we have some like movement. But I kind of agree of like I knew I was just like, okay, so the two people that we have been foreshadowing this entire season, those are gonna be the two dragon riders. I think it would have been crazy and would have been more on par with Game of Thrones if one of them had died. Mm -hmm. And been like, oh, no, not everybody's Targaryen that thinks they are, actually. Yeah. Um, Or maybe, like, have it next season one of them finds out rather than them both finding out. I thought it was very easy just to say, like, oh, both of them are going to do this mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. Um, I am very interested to see what's ha going to happen with the two of them, like you are, Vinny, because I think... There's a lot of foreshadowing in this episode about the risk that she's that Rhaenyra is taking mm. with letting them mm. just take on these dragons. Mm. She, I think, in her mind is putting herself in a good position because now she has dragon numbers, but she doesn't know where these people that are riding these dragons actually stand. Yeah. And I think that was foreshadowed one in the fight between or like the disagreement between her and Jace. Because Jace yeah. was very upset that she was doing this. And then also, I don't know who it was. Who was the group of like people when she was about to speak to the group oh, of like bastards? Oh, like the dragon tamers. Like the right? people that like control the dragon, they speak Valyrian. Yeah. I don't know what their official title is, but I they were either. very against they it. They were very against <laughs> it. And they were like, we're not going to help you yeah. do yeah. this, essentially. And so I just feel like if they're giving us those two breadcrumbs, they're really feeding us to get prepped that one or both or all three of these new riders are mm. going to all of a sudden be like, wait, if I'm a dragon rider, why can't I be king? Right. Um, and I feel like mm. it's I do agree with you, Vinny, on this, though. It's now adding unpredictability, which mm. is good because so far it's just been green versus black. Who has more power? Who has the bigger uh, dragon essentially right now? And now they're throwing in these three curveballs of like. Are there now three new people that think that they deserve the dragons and deserve the power? Mm, yeah. um, which I don't know. A part of me does believe Adam because he he did bow to her that he is going to stay loyal. Um, and I don't remember. Does he know that he who's his father? And does he just keep that hidden, or does he have no idea? I I I think he knows, he knows he, right? He, you know, him and uh, Alan is his other as the other. I brother. think they know. I think right? they, yeah, they That's definitely both too. know. But mm. I think. Alan is more standoffish about it, mm -hmm. and Adam's more like, we need to like press our advantage. Like yeah. that's our father. Um, so yeah, I think they both. I think both he does too. So I could see him just because he's already made that statement, um, sticking to it. But the other two, I mean, <laughs> they never once said like, yeah, Queen Rhaenyra. They literally said like, especially uh, Hugh. He said, well, I'm gonna go get what's mine because I don't want to starve anymore. Mm -hmm. And so he's doing coming at it from a selfish point of view, not yeah. because he wants to help her win. He's coming at it because he wants power now. Mm -hmm. He's got mm -hmm. that Targaryen blood, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. and I think see, it's a coming. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I, I I see where you guys are coming from, and I do agree actually. Because Mark, you used the word haste, and I I think I don't necessarily think that the story beat of the of of 
of Rhaenyra's de desperity of trying to get as many Targaryens in the room at once, I don't think that's necessarily a negative story beat, mm. but it's rather, like you said, the, the haste of how it is. And I, I do agree with that. If the pacing of House of the Dragon has been a lot more breakneck compared to the slow burn of Game of Thrones, mm -hmm. where only like a episode or two ago the idea was brought up and then immediately we're already done with that right that subplot of like okay now the dragon rider's done and, right mm -hmm. so i think that the i think this would have been more satisfying if we were given more time and it was fleshed out through maybe this story beat could have been introduced earlier in the season rather than so late and then have it just be resolved so quickly and have that build up to this story beat where it would have felt more more satisfying mm -hmm. yeah um, so yeah yeah and, and you bring up like a um like a good point that I, I wanted to mention when you said it um my sister we were talking about the episode and she the jay scene which i really liked i was like yeah. oh this is really good and then she's like but it was his plan to bring all the bastards together, the Red Dragon. So oh, why is yeah. so why is he now why is he now mad that it worked? And I was like, oh damn, you're right. <laughs> that does kind of suck. Okay, so I kind of agree. I was just confused by what his motive was in that whole mm. fight. Is it he's, because he does he knows that he's now not going to be the heir? I think I think it's just his insecurities that he knows he's a bastard and it's like. I'm I'm the queen's son and I have a dragon, but now if anyone has a dragon and they have Targaryen blood, like they're kind of my equal now. Mm -hmm. And like him being a bastard is now equal to Hugh being a bastard. And I think he just feels insecure about that. Yeah. But um I agree, like his motivations this season have been kind of like wishy washy. Like one episode he hates her his mom, and the next episode he's like, I'll do anything for you. Yeah, like I'm so <laughs> confused by his character. I want him to be like that right hand guy for her that's like, no, whatever my mom wants, I'm gonna do what my mom wants. But I just mm. feel like he's always like brooding. And it's like, <laughs> my mom's not listening to me. And I'm like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I I will say, I will say it's it's more on the performances here. Uh I don't know his Oh, Harry Colette and mm -hmm. Emma Darcy. I feel this is this is kind of a tangent, but off. I feel that they're more, they feel more of mother and son than Aegon and, and Allison yeah, and yeah. Aemon and Allison. Like their performances, I feel their chemistry feels a lot more mother son like than the other uh, mothers and sons we see in the series. I just wanted to point that out. You know, I agree sure. with you. There is definitely, when they go on scenes together, there's a little bit more of like emotion yeah. or just like care going on but i think it's also on emma darcy's side that mm. they just are easier to, they're they're more tapped into that emotion of like taking care of their baby um mm. but yeah i was a little surprised by that scene i was like what's going on and what are these motives right. but i mean he's not wrong because if you think about it it once these two new characters ulf and hugh start kind of like connecting the lines of their lineage i mean technically one of them is more in uh what am i trying to say like next in line next in line right, versus yeah. rhaenyra right yeah it would mm. be like rhaenyra damon them probably and then jace yeah, yeah. That, that makes sense so he's not wrong mm. um to be like terrified about this and also i think the element is that like why does she need to announce this why can't they do it a little bit more secretive rather mm. than making like broad announcements about like we're looking for bastards yeah. everybody yeah. like <laughs> right. right like yeah where's like king's landing security like yeah how, like no one's like realizing that there's a mass exodus of people and that like food is coming in from rainier it's like mm -hmm. should we yeah. should we shore up the border like what's going on here um adam uh so this is a question i had so mm -hmm. corliss um valyrian right like do valyrians have the ability to ride dragons or is like the person that corliss had this bastard with where are they the targaryen they and then adam is able to fly the dragon mm, they so uh, to my knowledge they do not have the ability to ride dragons the other valyrians in the show that we've seen like uh Lenor, who rode sea smoke his mother obviously being Rhaenys. Okay. And same with Bela and Damon's ex-wife who previously rode Vagar, who 
yeah. was the, the also uh the daughter to Corlise and Rainitz. Okay. So it's a valid point you bring up. Um, yeah. So who's who? What, what Targaryen did he sleep with? Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't. They okay. need to lay this out a little bit clearer, <laughs> honestly, because sometimes I do feel like it's just like they're throwing names around and they're like, "Keep up, good luck, yeah. everybody." Hmm. Um, but I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I think I was confused just because, like, I know like Val- Valeria, like the Valarians, like they were from old Valeria, and that's when like dragons were around and they speak High Valerian. So it's like. I didn't know if they were also like dragon riders or if it was only Targaryens, but that, that makes sense. Yeah, because they, they they say a line in this episode, I forget at what point, but Adam does mention, I think with Alan, uh, the other brother, about how Alan's like, oh, my blood is only a, a salton sea. Okay. Yeah. And, and something like that. Yeah, um, um, it's kind of blurred, but I'm I'm ninety five percent sure, ninety uh, percent sure <laughs> that Valerians cannot, although from old Valeria, cannot ride dragons like Targaryens mm-hmm. can. Got it. The one thing that I really can't wait for, and I I don't know if they're gonna do this in the finale episode, is when Damon finds out about all these new dragon riders because hmm. this man is hmm. in the dark yeah. actually in the dark yeah. he's like yeah. fully gone and i feel like the moment that he shows up he's gonna be like who are these people and mm. like what did you do to our lineage right mm. yeah mm. damon is it has been radio silent, radio cut off, like, silent. Yeah. mark i need to know your thoughts because we haven't talked oh, about okay. him yeah do you like the dream world that he's in do you like his storyline what how are you feeling i think I, I agree with what you guys have been saying for weeks it's just it's been drawn out yeah. I, I think the point of it was was made already he's mm. kind of reflecting on his his uh ambition for power and now that he's like obtaining power he's maybe regretting it like he has the scene with Viserys that vision he's like the crown you want it like this is what it takes because he just had to kill someone who was loyal to him and got him the power and now he's kind of at the mercy of all these river lords that he thought he was the senior to and Mm -hmm. I think now this this whole season has just been him reflecting on you know do I actually want that power if it comes with all this stuff because he's always kind of been flying by the seat of his pants and then power you know forces you to be structured and and damon is not structured Mm -hmm. so i think i I definitely agree with you guys that it it didn't need to be this many episodes but i think as you you said it was just biding time to get us to this showdown that i think is coming with Mm -hmm. um amond so yeah, I, I I like this episode. I like his role in this episode. I do I like too. the the Riverlands part of it, but yeah, it didn't need to be. How many episodes has it been? Has it been like six or seven? Seven. Seven. Episodes? Seven. He left. He left at the end of episode one. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I forget when he made it to Harrenhal. I. It but... was the second episode. I'm pretty sure mm. is when it was like him. When you when you were like, oh, he's so much swagger of like yeah. him like walking around, yeah. and now it's like, oh god, like five episodes yeah. later, Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. Do you think the witch is real? I still I still stand by that theory that that Rivers, uh, the um, the girl that has been making him the potion yeah. and stuff. Do you guys think she's real? I still think it's like a fig, not a figment of his imagination, but she's not actually there. a part of like the hair and hall like curse kind of thing. Yeah. I kind of am on your side that she's not really there. Yeah, because she doesn't interact with anybody else. Right. Yeah. That's hmm. and then hmm. there was a there was a scene and I saw this online, but I recognize it in the episode too. There's a scene where that old guy that's kind of been like the person that's been walking him around. Damon's having this conversation with her in the hallway and then she walks by and the old guy like looks at her like this and then she like doesn't appear behind him and he's just like that was who are you talking mm-hmm. to oh and then, totally she does so, I, so don't I was like oh that 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 looks like it confirms that yeah so. hmm. it's just him having like another delusion that's mm-hmm. going on this is probably one of my favorite episodes beside in a long time for him because he's finally having meaty scenes and being put into pressure situations not just like whimsically dreaming hmm. uh, yeah. yeah i i really liked that scene with the river lords because one it's damon is finally kind of getting a taste of his own medicine you know like being called out and there were so many great lines of dialogue <laughs> yeah. of like just the 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 punches that are thrown at him and 
seeing that and finally uh, and then the vision afterward with the Viserys that is kind of putting Damon now um in a more like you guys mentioned how he lacked foundation and now this is kind of rebuilding that foundation for him and I also just liked seeing that dialogue exchange like I said with the river lords and damon how you could like matt smith does such a great job because you could tell like he's just he's just irking to say something like a like a bully you know yeah. he's like a bully and he's like irking to be like say something but he knows like he's just gonna make a fool of himself if he does mm -hmm. yeah i also like that we're finally seeing more of the river lords and the power that they do hold in the structure because i think that they're going to be a huge part in this next episode mm -hmm. um especially if this big fight scene does end up going down that I think everybody's predicting does. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's nice to see just connecting the dots more of like, okay, so who has the power amongst them and like what's going on exactly? Yeah, mm -hmm. I love uh, I love that honor won for once in Game of Thrones world. Like the honor of the River Lords, like their word, like that actually beat out the tyrants and the corruption. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, that's, yeah. that's, a, new, like, that's, a, new, go. that's a new take for Game <laughs> of Thrones. That's really cool. Um, so yeah, and like that House Tully kid, like, Everyone was looking down on him, and he's like, "All right, well, you want our swords? You gotta kill yeah. kill that guy that was <laughs> loyal to you." Like it, it was like showing power without being this like great warrior. Yep. It was really cool. Mm -hmm. It reminded me a lot of Bella Ramsey, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. in in Game mm -hmm. of Thrones, and and now Oscar Tolley. I'm I'm really enjoying him. Go off, yeah. go off on go him. Off, no, I'm yeah. excited to see what happens with them. Um. Why don't we switch sides and go to green a little bit? Mm, okay, yeah. okay. What do we? What do we? Let's start with. Let's start with Allison. Hmm. Uh -huh. What's going on with her, guys? <laughs> she she's searching for. She's having a a retreat. <laughs> I think it's interesting. I, 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 this is not having to do anything with the story, but. I enjoyed the shots that came from her outdoor exploration. Adventure. Yeah, <laughs> her adventure. Uh, it's, I've become so accustomed whenever I turn the show on to like the dark moody interior mm. to then have these beautiful wide shots of like this really saturated green and then the wide shot of just like the river and her in the, in the right hand corner, like plopping her way into the river or I mean the lake. And that was just very beautiful. Like it, my the chemistry in my brain was like, wow, that was nice. <laughs> um, uh, but I'm I'm this. It's interesting. Yeah, I feel like it might come off as filler, but I also think that this isn't necessarily bad because it is showing that Allison is after last episode where Eamon is just like, we don't need you on this council. She's reflecting. And it's not like we spend too much time with her. Mm -hmm. I don't think that any more time I would have been like, okay, this is let's End let's it. get over it. But we get just enough time with her, I think. I was uh I don't know if either of you know like Hamlet at all, but it was giving like Ophelia vibes. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Um and so for a second I was especially when they showed her hair, I was like, Oh my god. I was like, did Allison just like kill herself? I'm like, what's yeah. going on here? Which I also wouldn't hate though, because a part of me, and this was a theory that I had a couple of episodes ago. I feel like her storyline is starting to dwindle down and she might get killed off. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I feel that way. I just feel like she isn't giving too much to the world and to anybody at this point. And in this world, if you're not bringing anything to the table, you are... Done. Yeah, hmm. yeah, she's hmm. out of the game right now. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, thank God you knew Shakespeare because I was I didn't yeah. want to say something dumb. I was like, this reminds me of Shakespeare, but mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say the wrong play. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I I agree with you guys. I, I I don't think it was bad. I thought it was you know interesting to just see where her head state is at. Um, and yeah, I thought you know, did she just kill herself and yeah. see that? Uh, I'm curious what the the symbolism of the of the hawk or the eagle flying mm -hmm. over when she sees that and that gets her to like spring up and get out of the water i'm curious mm. what they're thinking or like foreshadowing with that um but yeah other than that i don't i don't have much other than yeah she's like she's out of the game and there needs to be some change or there she's needs to be something get, which a part of me thinks it might be because they didn't they brought up um auto again mm. just very briefly in like a conversation of i don't remember what they said but they're like oh it's making like slow progress or something 
So I wonder if she reconnects with her father mm. somehow because that's like the only safety that she really has right now. Right. Um, mm. I also want Otto to come back. Yeah. I like love that, yeah. that actor and I just feel like he has so much dimension. Um, and they keep they keep giving him his name around. So I'm interested. Yeah. I, I hope he comes and back. Gwen, and Gwen, like her brother, like she's had like these conversations mm -hmm. with him. So like he's still there for her. She might like fall back to him. Mm. And did they say she had like a son at um yes. at the place? Yeah, she has another son that we haven't seen yet. Okay. So so she has that to live for. So yeah. <laughs> maybe she should go back to, to that to the house and yeah. uh, and yeah. check on him and maybe maybe she'll like shack up with like Otto, her brother, and then their son figure and, it out. and figure something out. I don't know. I mean, is that son with that's a son out of like not with Viserys, so not a Targaryen? Or... Oh, I'm I'm not sure. Mm. Yeah, I don't know either. Is that actually. son gonna get a dragon? Mm. Who knows? Oh my god, can you imagine? <laughs> Allison gets a dragon. Allison, <laughs> Allison gets a dragon on her side. You get a dragon. You, you get, get a dragon. A dragon. <laughs> yeah. A dra yeah, yeah. I'm interested. I I was mixed about her thing. I was mm. kind of like, what's going on? Overall, though, I feel like this was a heavy black episode. It wasn't like mm. green didn't get a lot of screen time. Even, uh, like, mm. Aegon got some actually. Yeah, he got the his like walking the, he's like, like recovering walking now. i i would love because i think Aegon has been such a strong character i would love to see him turn around and like outsmart or overtake aemon's like mm. aemon is such like a so far ahead and aemon has been the one to be like you're you're an idiot you're a fool like you haven't been taking this seriously i think it'd be such a cool arc if Aegon flips and takes it seriously and then overtakes aemon because aemon underestimates him mm. i think that would be so cool and especially with like laris by his side like them both being crippled like kind of working together in the shadows i think that would mm. be really cool and and another thing too is from a the first thing that pops in my mind is a visual parallel between his father mm -hmm. viserys being that crippled king and yep. Aegon also being a now crippled king. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I do wonder, do you think Laris is genuine to who do you think he's more genuine to? Aegon or Aemond? Or is it just whoever gets the power? I, you I, think he's that slippery snake kind yeah. of that? Yeah. I think he's I, little finger he'll align mm -hmm. with whoever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah, because at first I was like, why is he pushing him so hard? I was like, is it because he wants him to just like die and like not recover fully? Or is it because he genuinely wants him to? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that guy, I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, what's happening over here? What's mm -hmm. going on? He's interesting. But then also, uh, okay, who do who do I want to talk about? Okay, uh, Cole wasn't in this episode at all. Mm, no. which i feels like weird i would have rather have seen like their journey a little bit of just like where are they at right now are they like struggling because they clearly none of them wanted to go to this war and start traveling uh to go meet up with damon essentially so it's like are they in good spirits are they not in good spirits are they freaking out are mm. they worried did they see the other dragon i just feel uh -huh. like they should have shown us a little kernel of like where that world or that group is at mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah they're heading to heron hall right or, mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. got it yeah yeah we didn't see the hand of the king in the episode in literally episode. we didn't see the hand of the king at all we did see yeah. the king randomly at the end mm -hmm. i think that you brought up allison before and how you think how she's kind of dwindling away into almost inevitable death but I think her character arc with Cole isn't over yet. Mm. We haven't got like the definite end to her character. So if Cole is going to die, which he's definitely going to die eventually <laughs> sometime and, or if Allison's going to die, we, there needs to be a final interaction, I believe. So that was the first thing that popped in my mind when we brought up the Allison whole situation. And I was like there, I was thinking like, okay, where's Cole? And, how is their relationship going to end mm. you know because yeah. we did have a moment where after he becomes hand of king and uh i believe they were taking down the rat catchers mm -hmm. that were hung and you know they have a a very tense interaction together on the street allison and cole but i just i don't i don't think that's the end i don't think that's the end i don't think that there's still more to be resolved you know yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and he ignores her like when she comes into his room and he's like cleaning his sword and she's like asking him all these questions and he's just kind of like, mm, no, nah, it's all good. Yeah. Damon's plan, we're all good. So yeah, it's definitely unresolved. Yeah. No. Do you? I don't want to. If if jumping back to Team Black, jump just back briefly. Jump. Do it. Because <laughs> way 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 back, actually, when we first the first thing we brought up was the opening for the episode and. Liz, you said you kind of didn't like the how Rhaenyra was very passive mm-hmm. within her interaction with Adam. How do you guys feel now that we are in the penultimate episode of this season? Just Rhaenyra overall is not queen material yeah. for this whole entire season. That's why, and I love Rhaenyra, I do. Yeah, yeah. But she's been extremely passive, and I don't know if this is just a part of her character arc where she's having this this uh, this bump and this low point after Lucerus's death, where she is desperate. She is looking towards Mysteria for that strength and that intelligence. And she's has that desperity to her and then also that insecurity to her where she can't take home and drive the ship. And just all throughout the season, I've just kept, especially now that we are coming on to episode eight, the finale, I'm just thinking like, wow, she so desperately wants to be queen, but she's not showing any traits of being a strong leader yeah so no i'm glad you brought it up um yeah she's definitely felt very passive this entire season things have been going on around her and she hasn't really had a hand in things usually um what i what i think is very interesting is that she has been saying i want no bloodshed i want no bloodshed i want no bloodshed but she continues this war in a in an ego kind of thing like i deserve this was my throne i Mm -hmm. want that throne but she always like reiterates, I, I don't want to shed any blood, but she has continually showed that she is willing to continue shedding blood. And that scene with Jace, when she says this to him, he's like, why do you still do this or something like that? And it's it's very interesting that she keeps saying that. And it's like, is she really, you know, this person we should be rooting for? Like, it, it is interesting. Like, mm-hmm. I do still root for her. Yeah. I still do like her. But it's just something that's kind of been you know being uh it keeps getting brought up and i'm like interesting and she and this was pretty much like she she knew she was going to kill all these people like she Mm -hmm. knew that all these innocent people were going to die when she does this dragon pit test and she starts with vermithor who she says is literally the most aggressive of the dragons outside Mm -hmm. of of vagar uh my sister was like why didn't she do silverwing first like silverwing was more like calm and chill like you have a room full of people let's bring the chill one out first Mm -hmm. and she's like Nope, let's bring in Vermithor. We, we need the biggest dragon. They got Vagar. So I think she's making a lot of decisions that, you know, in one side of her, her her mouth, she's saying no bloodshed. Then the other side of it, she's causing a lot of death. So mm-hmm. I think she's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I also think, like, to be a good king or queen, you do need to listen to the people that you have at your table. And she just is always getting ripped apart by everybody. Mm-hmm. Like, the only good... um uh, she, the the first good pick she ever made was by making uh Corliss her hand because he actually is like standing by her. But a part of me thinks he's doing that only out of respect of the position, not necessarily out of respect for Rhaenyra as his queen. Yeah. Um, and so I don't know. I just like want her, and I said this last episode. I want her to just step into the queen role and be like Mm. the bad bitch that we all want her to be. And a part of me thinks that it's just not in her. And I think that's why she low key knows she needs Damon because Mm. Damon does bring out that part of her of like fight and fire. Mm. And right now I think she just is a little insecure because she doesn't know what to do and is just kind of like throwing paint against the wall to see what sticks and i think she really needs damon because he pitches idea and then she knows if that idea is bad or not (laughs) and rather she's just doesn't have anybody so Mm. i i don't know a part of me also thinks something bad is gonna happen to team black in the next episode that then unleashes her anger yeah Mm. i mean she's got all the dragons now so like yeah i don't think team green is gonna lose in the next episode a part of me thinks team black's gonna take another big hit Mm -hmm. and i don't know what though yeah and and i hope that this is intentionally all of this passivity from her 
is intentionally her character arc and eventually you'll have her like you said liz step into that bad bitch role Mm -hmm. right but i just really even if if something does happen to team black in a negative consequence i hope she doesn't regress back even further into this desperate passive Mm. like she said how earlier in the earlier episodes how she's like oh they don't fear me anymore they don't fear me i need them to fear me and if something bad happens she needs to take it in a way that's like okay this is my this is my moment i can't let this passivity i like go any longer or more negative consequences are going to come i i just just the worst i mean it's really coming from a, a place of fear after seeing season eight of game of thrones and seeing how conveniently things kind of wrapped up and character arcs were just thrown into the you know into the shitter and i don't want it to be that she continues this passivity and Mm -hmm. she just doesn't have queen like attributes and then somehow ends up on the throne Mm -hmm. like this 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 her character arc needs to needs to happen you know this might i just hope that this is intentional you know Mm -hmm. this what i'm trying to get at here yeah me too um so who who's her like a uh, minister of like whisper Missaria, is that how you say the name? Yeah. 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 I think a really like good example of the pacing is that we had this kiss last week between them and then this week it's they have a, like a room together and they don't even bring it up like it's not awkward like nothing and there's no mm. character interaction between them and it's like I feel like that's something we should bring up and talk yeah. about but we kind of yeah. just brush past it and she's like we, this this could work. I, I told King's Landing they're gonna bring all these people in. Like yeah. I feel like Rainier would be like, okay, so now that we got that out of the way, um, about the other day, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or like, does one of them try to kiss the other again, and then the other person like shuts it down? Yeah, I mm. felt so the same way because a part of me I was just like, was like HBO just like queer baiting in the last episode to be <laughs> like, oh, mm. we have a, a girl on girl kiss, everybody, and like now it's just like, never mind, we're not gonna follow that plot line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. No, I actually 100% agree with you. I was under that impression within that ep- within that scene. It was weird that nothing was brought up, and yeah, it just felt like yeah. the yeah. pacing, like you or, know, like does Rhaenyra, going. <laughs> does Rhaenyra stop trusting her a little bit more because mm. she's like, oh shit, like I made a mistake. I'm yeah. like opening up too much to this yeah. girl. Like there's so much. I just can't wait for Damon to get back. He's gonna like blow shit up and mm. just really. I don't know. He's gonna yeah. roll up with Cy- uh, is his what's his dragon's name? Cyrax. Cyrax. Yeah. yeah, he's gonna roll up and be like, "Yo, what the hell? Why are there like five dragons here mm. with people on mm-hmm. them? I thought my dragon was mm. the coolest, and now there's yeah. someone's on Vermithor. What? <laughs> like, no, who's this guy? Hugh? <laughs> yeah, he's gonna be pissed. Um, yeah. speaking of unclaimed dragons, how have you guys felt about this whole um, what's it called? Spot? What's that? The the veil? What? How have you felt about this like veil storyline with um? Reyna mm. and this rogue dragon that's oh. killing sheep. I've I've felt it's been very confusing and kind of been just like shoved in, and I haven't really understand like where the veil stands. Or like, give us a dragon, and it's like, well, we have these two baby ones. It's like those don't count, and then they kick her out. Like, I'm just like very confused about how they've been telling that part of the story. Yeah, Vinny, you go yeah, for it. I I agree. It's it's every. It's almost like I've forgotten about it because it's so like even last episode, it was so just kind of there Mm -hmm. and then it was not there. Yeah. And like the rest of the episode just overshadowed it completely. Uh, Yeah, it feels forced. It feels forced. I'm I'm, going to agree with that. I just I don't know. I don't really have much else to say about it, though, because it's so just kind of odd right now. And it's like, okay, so there's a random dragon. We're focusing on Reyna. Reyna, you know, obviously, infamously, does not have a dragon. She's tried and tried and has not been able to tame one. So they're kind of alluding to this point of, like, she's going to tame the wild dragon, but she's also leaving the veil. So, I mean, does she convenient? Another convenience would be next episode on her way out of the veil somehow runs into this wild dragon. But 
Yeah, I don't know. It's weird because like if she's leaving the veil, if she's gonna be out gone, then then there was no point of even mentioning <laughs> yeah. that there's a wild dragon unless you know, unless Team Black hears of this knowledge or Team Green hears of this knowledge is like, okay, now we need new dragon riders and then tries to time to tame this dragon. Yeah, it's kind of all over the place. But. I think she's gonna find this dragon and just like bond with it. Right. Like right yeah. off the bat. It's kind of just it's gimmicky and I know that's the route that they're going. Um, I do find her character interesting. I think that they're not showing a lot for her, but also like giving her a lot of screen time compared to her sister. Like, yeah. Hmm. So I don't know if they're trying to yeah. show prep us for maybe she becomes more powerful than we're anticipating. Um, but yeah. she's totally finding this dragon. Right. Well, I don't know if it's happening next episode. <laughs> I I would bet it does. Um, but yeah, at I'd be, the, yeah. Uh, yeah, at the pace we're going, at it seems pace, like. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, what was the whole point of her whole se- this whole season for yeah. her? Yeah. And I mean, maybe they're setting up that like a wild dragon is like it could be bigger. It could be like more ferocious than the ones that have been kind of caged in Dragon mm-hmm. Zone. So it's like it's a bigger asset than these like caged. Dra- like I have no idea like yeah. why this is such a big deal of a dragon, but. Yeah, I think as we've seen, the dragons can just find their dragon riders. So it's she'll just crazy. be walking, and the dragon will be like, "I saw you were interested in me. <laughs> <laughs> would you like? Would you like a ride or something?" Yeah. Okay. What yeah. other predictions do you guys have for the? Because we only have one more episode. This is crazy that there's. I feel like more stuff should have happened at this point, but I think they're just gonna throw a huge packed episode at us. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I I don't I don't have any major predictions. I think uh we'll have a, a standoff with Damon and Eamon at Heron Hall. Heron Hall's been built up this whole mm-hmm. season. We have all these river lords, obviously Vagar, um Cyrex has been just sleeping on the side of a mountain for this whole season. So I think that's my big prediction is is something happens there and maybe that spurs um uh Rhaenyra, uh Rhaenyra to you know mobilize all these dragons she now has uh yeah i don't know maybe corliss you know re- finally yeah corliss's ships are like mm. a thing i don't know yeah i don't know what's gonna happen i have a very random prediction that <laughs> oh, will probably yeah, not happen in this probably next season but i'm just gonna throw it out there i think damon's gonna kill Missaria. i think that mm. damon we're, we're talking about how it's chaos right now at Dragonstone that once Damon comes back after being, you know, not acknowledged of anything, he's going to kind of freak and be like, what the hell? Yeah. And also seeing Viseria, someone that he had a prior relationship to and knows that she's kind of uh, like she's even said she only works for people who have money and like she's loyal to the, she, she's loyal to the money. Yeah. So. I think if Damon knows of the true relationship that Rhaenyra and Miserus is having, and then on top of that, maybe Miseria is not as trustworthy as we think she is, which I personally think that. I think that she's doing a great job on Team Black right now, but I don't know. I just I still can't trust her. I can't trust someone that's just gonna be like, Yeah, I'm only loyal to the money, you know? Right. So I think there's gonna be Damon's gonna kill her. Um, after revealing some sort of knowledge that Rhaenyra doesn't know at that current time, and then Rhaenyra's gonna freak and be like, "Why'd you kill Missaria?" Mm-hmm. And then Damon's like, "No, I did it for you. I did it for the for the for the Team Black. Team Black. Yeah. Um, you don't realize she was actually ulterior motives the whole time." Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. That's just where my brain is going. Mm-hmm. But. Um, yeah, I think it's gonna be the big fight between Aemon and Damon. Um. I want there to be like a big surprise death. I don't know if they'll go that route though, because they already gave that to us in the end of season one. So I don't know if they'll just kill off an important person or if it's just going to be like an all out brawl kind of more. Um, Is it too early to kill Damon? I think Damon has too much storyline still. Yeah. Is it too early to kill Aemon Doth? And then Allison comes back to power mm-hmm. while Aegon is still recovering. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I I think they need to do something mm-hmm. pretty pretty drastic. They do. But a part of me still thinks that it's going to be Team Black that takes the hit. Yeah. Could Jace get killed? The heir? 
Mm. I, don't, <laughs> so, <laughs> said, mm. I, I thought about that. I thought about that, but I don't think that's going to happen because they already had a son die. Yeah. So I, I think if they're just going to repeat the same like ending True. to season one where it's like Rhaenyra's son tragically suddenly dies. And same with now nah, if, if per se, let's say Chase goes out in the same way. I think that'd just be like the biggest eye roll to be mm-hmm. like, okay, now you're just repeating things, you know? Right, so right. I, I you personally know. believe that Chase is not going to die. Okay. 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 But, we'll see what happens. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited. I hope that they kill it. I hope that they show up. Um, I don't think we have anything else to cover, yeah, nope, right? Nope. Well, uh, if you stayed with us through this whole review, please let us know what you think in the comments. Let us know if you liked this episode, if you're kind of on the same vibe as us that we've been wanting more from this whole season, um, what your predictions are for the final episode. We only have one more left, and there's a lot, a lot for them to cover, a lot of storylines to give us a little bit more of a wrap-up to or just give us more build-up for the next season. Um, just keep watching with us. Be back here for next episode next week. Well, I think all four of us actually might be covering yeah. it. Mark, Vinny, DJ, and I. So it's going to be a very big episode. <laughs> I hope we're not disappointed. Mm. Um, thank you for watching our episode. Please subscribe to us. Uh, we have a lot of show, uh, a lot of shows that we're covering, a lot of films. We just recorded Twisters today. Um, and so big things coming. Please follow us on TikTok. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, we're on YouTube, we're on Spotify, Apple Podcast, um, covering everything and anything that we possibly can. Uh, so just signing off, I am Liz Seiko. I'm Mark Alcabino. I'm Vinny Albano. Thank you for watching. This is The Culture.